Um, I'm going to, the, my talk is going to be in two parts. Um, first of all, I'll talk about the Plan 9 compiler itself and uh, try to answer the question that's probably in many people's minds, uh, why on earth do we need yet another C compiler for RISC-V? Uh, and then uh, when I've convinced you of that, I will talk about the actual um, experience of porting the Plan 9 C compiler to RISC-V um, 32 and 64 bit. So a little history, what's the Plan 9 C compiler? Um, as you might guess, it was originally developed for use with the Plan 9 operating system. The original compiler was written by Ken Thompson, um, who was also known as one of the uh, pioneer, the two authors of, uh, of Unix. Besides Plan 9, the Plan 9 C compiler is also been used in the development of the Inferno operating system, which is a sort of uh, commercial simplified spin-off of Plan 9. Um, the Inferno um, kernel and the uh, virtual memory and runtime of the uh, Inferno Limbo language are, are written in C and built with the Plan 9 C compiler. Um, more recently, the Plan 9 C compiler was used to bootstrap the Go language. The original releases of Go were not self-compiling. The Go compiler was written in C, and in order to make it easily portable to different platforms, um, the Plan 9 C compilers were used for that. So the first uh, releases of Go up to Go 1.4 um, were packaged with the uh, Plan 9 C compilers. Nowadays, Go is, is self-compiling. There's a Go compiler written in Go, but some bits of the Go runtime are still in assembly language. There, there are some things you just can't do in, in Go or even in C. Uh, and to build those bits of the runtime, uh, there's a Go assembler, which is essentially the Plan 9 assembler. It has the same syntax as the Plan 9 uh, assembly languages, uh, but that too has been, has been rewritten in Go. But people who, who are familiar with the, with the innards of the Go language and have looked at the runtime library will have seen some, some Plan 9 assembly syntax, possibly without realizing that's what they were looking at. Um, well, those are all fairly abstruse uh, uses. But another thing the Plan 9 compilers are useful for is uh, embedded programming on small uh, systems where, where there's no operating system when you want to write right down to the bare metal. Uh, and doing that sort of development, it's actually quite nice having a, a small and lightweight development system rather than having to uh, use many gigabytes of, of GCC. You want something small and simple to match the, the size and simplicity of, of, your, uh, develop, of your, your target platform. Um, for that sort of purpose, Along with the compiler, there's a little runtime library called lib9, uh, which is a, a stripped down um, subset of the Plan 9 uh, runtime library, which uh, itself is, is a rather simplified version of libc. What language does the Plan 9c compiler compile? Well, because of the date it, it uh, was produced, it's roughly uh, ANSI standard around 1989, 1990. It's been modernized with some other features uh, like long, long for 32-bit, 64-bit uh, integers. Um, so it, it's a recognizable standard C. Um, it's missing some things like uh, constant volatile. Um, for example, there's no need for volatile as we'll see in a minute because all non-local data is treated as if it was vol volatile. So that makes it uh, simplifies writing embedded code and, and operating system code, which is the sort of target that uh, C is really best at. Uh, now here's the polemical slide. Um, I believe C isn't a high level language. It's not meant for application programming. There's lots of good abstract languages for application programming, which do all those high level things like automatic memory management and, and abstract data types that you want to be productive in, uh, in solving application problems. But for systems programming, 
when what you really want to do is control the hardware, you need a language which is close to the hardware. And C originally was created as an alternative to assembly language for doing those things which you, you need to control the hardware with for operating systems, device drivers, um, writing assemblers and compilers in. So the philosophy of the Plan 9 C compiler, I think, keeps to the original philosophy of the C language um, as it evolved with, with the invention of Unix. Um, it's a language for skilled systems programmers to do uh, to control um, exactly what the hardware uh, should be doing. It's up to the programmer to optimize the code by understanding uh, what the code what's being generated by the compiler. And because the compiler doesn't try to do any any fancy optimizations itself, it's pretty clear looking inspecting your C source what's going to be produced. Let me give you a, just a simple trivial example of that. Um, looking at some uh, embedded uh, real-time operating system code, I came across this um, completely arcane bit of, of trickery. There was a timing loop just by counting a, a variable from one to a million, but the body of the loop was some strange bit of GCC um, inline assembler. Um, the whole purpose of that is to stop GCC from optimizing the loop away and deleting it. Well, Plan 9 compilers don't try to be that clever. They won't optimize your code away, um, so you don't have to do the, the strange trickery. This isn't to say the Plan 9 C compiler doesn't optimize. It, it generates as good code as, uh, as I think you'd expect, but it doesn't go so far as to uh, ignore what you've asked it to do and just throw your code away. Now, what's different about the Plan 9 C compiler? Well, it's tiny. Um, the code source is kilobytes, not gigabytes. And just to give you an example, this afternoon I tried compiling the uh, ARM Plan 9 C compiler through itself on a Raspberry Pi 4 running with a remote server file system, uh, and it took 1.8 seconds. So um, the previous speaker said something about LLVM being rather slow to build. Um, I know from experience GCC is quite slow to build. I haven't tried building it on a Raspberry Pi, um, but even on a, a fairly fast Intel machine, it's, it takes more than seconds. Um, to show you just how small the compiler is, this is the machine independent part of the C compiler. So this is unchanged whatever architecture you're compiling for. Um, and the total is about 14,000 lines. Um, uh, the, it's based on YAC. There's a cc.y is, is YAC source, uh, which is the entire grammar. Uh, and the rest is manipulation of, of the abstract tree. Um, then for each architecture, there's a separate directory of um, uh, C code to do the machine dependent part of the compilation. And um, this, for the RISC-V version, for example, it's just under 7,000 lines uh, of C to do that. Now, there's more to compiling um, than just going from C source to, uh, to object code. You also have to uh, link the object code into an executable binary. And another way that the Plan 9 C compilers is unusual is that the C compiler produces a sort of abstract, high-level pseudo-assembler. Um, it's up to the linker to do the actual instruction, uh, machine instruction generation. So to give a, a, a better, um, a more accurate picture of the size of the compiler, you really have to include the linker as well. So the RISC-V linker is another 5,000 lines of C. Uh, and finally, part of the tool chain is the assembler. Because the, the linker does most of the work of machine instruction generation, the assembler is really just a, a translator from the, the abstract assembly syntax into um, for in, in text form 
to the binary form used by the linker. So the risk five assembler is is very small, and again, it's controlled by a simple by a yak grammar. Um, Plan nine began right from the start as a distributed operating system of machines, heterogeneous machines of multiple architectures. Um, unlike Unix, which sort of evolved from a single machine to uh, to different machines and, and networking came later, Plan 9 began right from day one as a, a network system. So it's designed right from the start to make com cross compilation and to make the handling of multiple architectures very straightforward and simple. Um, the, the first publicly available Plan 9 had C compilers for things like uh, Intel 386, um, Motorola 68000, MIPS, Sun, Spark stations. Um, things later on uh, were added like PowerPC, 64-bit Intel and AMD, uh, DEC Alpha machines, PowerPC, I said PowerPC, ARM. Um, and people are developing new Plan 9C compilers all the time, 64-bit versions. Um, NIOS is, is the uh, soft processor used in uh, Altera FPGAs and, and so on. So the Plan 9 Risk 5 c compiler is just another one in, in a long series. Now, to give you a picture of how Plan 9 deals with uh, heterogeneous distributed systems, it's typical to have a number of machines of different architectures all sharing the same server and even sharing the same root file system. So, um, for example, I've got a handful of uh, Raspberry Pi machines, uh, other older ARM systems. I've got some uh, Intel servers running. Occasionally, I've got uh, um, uh, a MIPS machine that, that gets turned on now and then and the PowerPC um, router running Inferno that shares the same root file system. So it, it's quite a, uh, a mixed system. When you log in to Plan 9, two variables are set. CPU type, which identifies the type of the machine you're running on, and obj type, which is the default uh, machine that you're going to be generating code for when you do a compilation. Now that's just the default. Um, it's very easy to generate code for different machines from the one you're running on. But uh, the usual case is probably to generate code for your own machine. Um, when you log in, there's separate, uh, instead of just having one slash bin directory where all the executables go, there's a separate slash bin for each architecture. So when you log in on an ARM, uh, you get slash ARM slash bin um, dynamically bound into your uh, slash bin directory. If you log in on a RISC V, you'll get slash RISC V slash bin uh, bound into your bin directory. So whichever uh, host you happen to be using, you'll see a picture of the binary executable files matching the architecture of what you're running on. You also will see the uh, shell scripts, because they're machine independent, will be, will be bound into the binary directory as well, um, executable directory, whatever architecture you're running on. Every, there's nothing special about a cross compiler in Plan 9. Every Plan 9 compiler is a cross compiler. So it's typical uh, if you've got a number of, if you're developing for multiple architectures, you'll be doing builds constantly targeting different arch arch architectures from the same source directory, possibly even simultaneously if you're running on a powerful server. So if, if the the C, every C compiler was called CC, and every object code file was called something.o. It would be very confusing. So Plan 9 has some rather um, unusual naming conventions to get around the confusion. So instead of calling the compiler CC, for every architecture, there's a, a single letter or, or digit which denotes that architecture. Uh, they're only very slightly mnemonic, but uh, you, you, um, we, 
we sacrifice um, uh, for conciseness, we sacrifice perhaps a little bit of, of readability. So, for example, the, the ARM uh, architecture letter is 5. So the ARM compiler is called 5C, the ARM assembler is 5A, the ARM linker is 5L, object code for ARM is something dot 5, and an executable for an ARM is, is not A dot out, but 5 dot out. Um, similarly, 386, everything's called 8 something, uh, AMD 64, 64 bit in, Intel is, is 6, and so on. So, um, fairly arbitrarily, I, I needed to pick a letter for RISC V, so RISC V has an I in it. I couldn't use R because RC uh, is the name of the Plan 9 shell, so I couldn't call the RISC V compiler RC. And the digit five was already taken by ARM, so um, RISC five compiler is called IC. The uh, RISC sixty five sixty four compiler uses the next letter in the alphabet that's called JC. So how would we uh, be using these tools? Well, if we've got a program prog dot C, um, compile it and link it for ARM. We say 5c prog.c, 5l prog.5, and that will produce a 5.out, which we can then move to the binary for uh, ARM with the name prog. Uh, the same things with ic and il will produce a binary for i.out, which we can move to the risk 5 binary directory. So then, which, if we're logged into an ARM, we type prog and we get the ARM compiled version of the program. We're logged into a risk five we type prog we get the risk five version of the program all, all happens rather automatically um, it's a bit verbose doing all the remembering to do the compiles and links and and so on so we have generally we use we use a make file rather than doing things by hand the plan nine equivalent of make uh, is called muk like everything with plan nine it's abbreviated and small and simple um, and there are some make include files that set up all the architecture de dependencies for you to call the right compiler and linker. So typically what you would do to compile prog and, and install it in your bind directory, you just say make prog.install. Or if you wanted to cross compile for RISC-64, if you were not running on RISC-64, you just prefix it with obj type equals risk 64 and there's your native compilation and your cross compilation um, well that's the end of the plan 9 lecture um, there's some very good documentation um, if you want to read further so now um, what does it take to retarget the plan 9 compiler tool chain to risk 5 there's more than just the compiler, of course, in the tool chain. There's a linker, assembler, there's uh, libraries, and then all the debuggers and uh, uh, other object code utilities that go with, with a language uh, and architecture. The first stage, it might seem a bit contrary, um, is to start with not an assembler, but a disassembler. Um, so the first thing to do is to go through the specification of the um, of the machine architecture, the instruction set architecture, uh, understanding all the different instruction encodings, and make sure you can decode all the possible instructions into the equivalent assembly language. Um, this is useful later on for for debuggers. Um, it's useful to have something you can check the compiler output put with. As soon as you've produced some machine language, you really want to be able to disassemble it to make sure you got the right thing. Um, and it also is a good way to, to learn to understand the machine. Once you've done, done a complete disassembler, um, you have to be pretty familiar with the instruction set. Um, there's a few other um, object code utilities in a library called libmatch for machine-dependent library. So in Plan 9, all the things, uh, all the, the subroutines 
which are dependent on uh, individual machine code architectures are isolated, encapsulated in, in this one library. So once these few routines are written, then you can uh, automatically have all the uh, debuggers and utilities, object code utilities um, for your new architecture. Um, next, we uh, build an assembler. That's quite simple to do um, because the assembly language syntax is, is straightforward. And Plan 9 uses the same or very similar assembly language syntax for all different architectures. So they can be very different from the vendor's assembly language, um, but this makes porting to a new, the assembly to a new architecture pretty straightforward. Um, the assembler, uh, as I mentioned before, produces a sort of high level abstract machine code, which is then translated into real in machine code instructions by the linker. So here's an example to store a byte to uh, a, a labeled memory location, you would say move B from a register to that label uh, offset from the static base. This instruction, this assembly language instruction, in fact, would be legal on ARM, would be legal on Intel, would be legal, I think, even on Spark, certainly is legal on RISC-V. So, um, because it's a, a, an abstraction of the actual machine instruction. The linker will translate it, uh, and I'm showing you here the, the RISC-V syntax. The linker will translate it into different things depending on where that label is located. Um, within plus or minus 2K, we can address off uh, register 3, which is the, the static base register. So that would take just a single instruction. Uh, if the label is, is too far from the base register, then we have to do a load of the high order part of the address, add the low order part of the address, and uh, then do a, a, an indexed or an indirect store. So the interesting point here is that the final, the actual memory address of, of label is only known at link time. It's not known by the C at, at C compiler assembly time. So only the linker has enough information to know which instruction sequence to generate. Um, now, other linkers can do this kind of discrimination, uh, like the, the two different forms of, of store, by what, what's called relaxation. But in order to do that, they have to pick apart the machine code that's passed to the linker recognize patterns that can be rewritten in a more efficient form and then put them back together again. The plan nine way makes this simpler to do by passing only a higher level to the linker and then the linker is the only thing that generates real real machine code. So that was a bit of a, of a diversion. Porting the assembler um, is it simply means picking an assembler from uh, another similar architecture. And uh, the MIPS, for example, is a RISC machine quite similar to RISC-V. Um, so starting with the MIPS assembler, it takes only a, a day or two to build a, an assembler for RISC-V. Um, the next job is uh, to retarget the linker to the new architecture, and that uh, is a, a bit more work than the assembler because we're now dealing with generating actual uh, machine code in all its complications. Um, RISC-V is a fairly easy one to do because it's a, a simple, regular, quite orthogonal architecture. And the original port was just um, RISC-V 32-bit without worrying about compressed instructions, um, without worrying about floating point. So it was um, not that big a job. Um, the plan line linker you is the, the guts of it is table driven. There's a table indexed by opcode and the types of the operands. Uh, and then for each combination of opcode and operand, you need to make routines to make generate the actual uh, machine code pattern to um, 
for for that abstract assembly code pattern. So once that's done, um, we need to run some some assembly source through the assembler and linker, then disassemble it again and see if the original source comes back. Finally, after doing the assembler and linker, uh, disassembler, assembler and linker, we can do the, the retargeting of the C compiler itself. Remember the earlier slide, there were just 12 source code files that had architecture, in the, architecture dependent uh, functions in them. So, and even those files, the pattern tends to be quite similar from one risk architecture to another. So again, uh, beginning with the MIPS C compiler, it was just a matter of adapting that to uh, the, the specific idiosyncrasies of the RISC V um, architecture where, where it differs from MIPS. Um, once the compiler itself is done, there's a small amount of runtime support library required. Um, most of the uh, libc and or the, the stripped down lib9 for, for uh, bare metal programming is machine independent and written in C. So it's, it's already portable. There's no work to do there. There's just a few things which can't be done in C that have to be done for each architecture in assembly language. Um, for example, test and set uh, for, for synchronization or 64-bit uh, uh, arithmetic operation, operations when running on a 32-bit architecture. Uh, there are some other routines which can be done uh, in C, for example, memory copy and string compare. So there's portable versions of those available for the library in C. Um, but it's because those uh, are, are um, very important in inner loops of algorithms and they can be done, it's, it's worth rewriting them specifically in assembly language to get that last bit of performance out. Um, but that can be kept, kept for later in the project. Um, how do we test all this stuff? Well, I always like to test on real hardware because then you're not debugging an emulator at the same time as you're debugging your, your software. Uh, my initial test platform was a, a very small embedded system, an FPGA uh, running the uh, Pico RV32 soft processor. This is on, on a MyStorm Black Ice development board. Um, that was big enough to actually run the output of the C compiler compiled through itself. Um, running on bare metal to run a compiler, you need some support for reading and writing files. You've got to read the source files and, and write the, the object code uh, back out. So to do that, um, I used a library called lib9p client, um, which uh, is a very simple um, client for the 9p pro protocol, uh, which is what Plan 9 and uh, some other operating systems use to do remote file system operations. So the bare metal program using uh, lib9p client to do open, close, read, write um, would uh, generate 9p um, uh, remote procedure calls that are sent down a serial line from the uh, FPGA RISC-V soft processor to a Plan 9 host um, which does the actual file um, file service. So using that platform, um, the first step was to compile a minimal hello world program and, and confirm that that runs on RISC-V. Um, once that was done, then uh, the next step is to compile the compiler through itself. So that produces a RISC-V executable version of the RISC-V compiler which runs on the risk five and produces binary output. Um, so first of all, we confirm that it can run the test hello.c program. And then for a, a more thorough test, we make sure that it can compile itself while running on risk five. So th that takes 
quite exercises quite a bit of the, the compiler's capabilities compiling itself. I would have liked to build the entire tool chain through itself on risk five, but sadly my my little test FPGA didn't have enough RAM to run the plan line linker. So before doing that, I had to switch to an emulator. Um, and my emulator of choice is, is tiny emu, um, which is a, a small and simple um, risk five emulator written in, in C rather than C++ and very self-contained. So that was quite easy to port to plan nine. So I can do my, my emulation still on the plan nine system. Everything up to this point was actually done about two years ago. Um, and I then went off and, and was uh, distracted by various other projects like, like building a, a SD RAM controller for my uh, FPGA so I could put some more memory on it. Um, but recently, uh, a colleague took an interest in porting the Plan 9 operating system itself to RISC-V. So I got back to, uh, to extending the compiler. Um, that meant essentially one by one adding different extensions. Uh, and each time I went through the same development steps of adding the extension to the, the disassembler, then to the assembler, the linker, the compiler, and then doing, doing the testing. So the extensions that were added were uh, in this order, floating point, single and double precision, instruction compression, and finally uh, a 64-bit version of the compiler. Uh, that, that final step sounds quite a big one, but in fact, the 64-bit RISC-V architecture is, is just a simple, almost perfectly proper superset of the 32-bit instruction set. So doing that extension was actually surprisingly simple to do. Uh, and in fact, the two compilers, IC and JC, are actually the same program. They just uh, distinguish um, whether it's compiling 32 or 64-bit code at runtime by, by how you invoke the, the program. Uh, that's how similar the two architectures are. So as of today, the, the tool chain fully supports RV32GC and RV64GC. Um, and um, as Jeremy mentioned, there's an ongoing exercise to uh, port the plan line operating system. Um, watch this space for more information. Any questions? Thank you, Richard.